in fairy tales, witches always wear silly black hats and black cloaks, and they ride on broomsticks. But this is not a fairy tale. This is about real witches. The most important thing you should know about real witches is this. Listen very carefully. Never forget what is coming next. Real witches dress in ordinary clothes and look very much like ordinary women. They live in ordinary houses and they work in ordinary jobs. That's why they are so hard to catch. A real witch hates children with a red-hot sizzling hatred that is more sizzling and red-hot than any hatred you could possibly imagine. A real witch spends all her time plotting to get rid of the children in her particular territory. Her passion is to do away with them, one by one. It is all she thinks about the whole day long, even if she is working as a cashier in a supermarket or typing letters for a businessman or driving around in a fancy car, and she could be doing any of these things. Her mind will always be plotting and scheming and churning and burning and whizzing and fizzing with murderous, bloodthirsty thoughts. Which child, she says to herself all day long, exactly which child shall I choose for my next squelching? A real witch gets the same pleasure from squelching a child as you get from eating a plate full of strawberries and thick cream. She reckons on doing away with one child a week, anything less than that, and she becomes grumpy. One child a week is fifty-two a year. Squish them and squiggle them and make them disappear. That is the motto of all witches. Very carefully a victim is chosen. Then the witch stalks the wretched child like a hunter stalking a little bird in the forest. She treads softly. She moves quietly. She gets closer and closer. And at last, when everything is ready, and she swoops. Sparks fly, flames leap, oil boils, rats howl, skin shrivels, and the child disappears. A witch, you must understand, does not knock children on the head, or stick knives into them, or shoot at them with a pistol. People who do those things get caught by the police. A witch never gets caught. Don't forget that she has magic in her fingers, and devilry dancing in her blood. She can make stones jump about like frogs, and she can make tongues of flame go flickering across the surface of the water. These magic powers are very frightening. Luckily, there are not a great number of real witches in the world today. There are still quite enough to make you nervous. In England, there are probably about 100 of them altogether. Some countries have more. Others have not quite so many. No country in the world is completely free from witches. A witch is always a woman. I do not wish to speak badly about women. Most women are lovely. But the fact remains that all witches are women. There is no such thing as a male witch. On the other hand, a ghoul is always a male. So indeed is a bogist. Both are dangerous. But neither of them is half as dangerous as a real witch. As far as children are concerned, a real witch is easily the most dangerous of all the living creatures on earth. What makes her doubly dangerous is the fact that she doesn't look dangerous, even when you all know all the secrets. You'll hear about those in a minute. You can still never be quite sure whether it is a witch you are gazing at, or just a kind lady. If a tiger were able to make himself look like a large dog with a waggy tail, you would probably go up and pat him on the head, and that would be the end of you. It is the same with witches. They all look like nice ladies. Kindly examine the picture opposite. Which lady is the witch? That is a difficult question. But it is one that every child must try to answer. For all you know, a witch might be living next door to you right now. Or she might be the woman with the bright eyes who sat opposite you on the bus this morning. 
She might be the lady with the dazzling smile who offered you a sweet from a white paper bag in the street before lunch. She might even, and this will make you jump, she might even be your lovely school teacher who is reading these words to you at this very moment. Look carefully at that teacher. Perhaps she is smiling at the absurdity of such a suggestion. Don't let that put you off. It could be part of her cleverness. I'm not, of course, telling you for one second that your teacher actually is a witch. All I'm saying is that she might be one. It is most unlikely. But, and here comes the big but, it is not impossible. <laughs> if only there were a way of telling for sure whether a woman was a witch or not. Then we could round them all up and put them in the meat grinder. Unhappily, there is no such way. But there are a number of little signals you can look out for, little quirky habits that all witches have in common. And if you know about these, if you remember them always, then you might just possibly manage to escape from being squelched before you were very much older. <laughs>